So now we just need to make sure that everybody's on board with how to read the table. So this is the same table before about the students and the number of classes they're taking, but we're asked, what is the probability that a randomly selected student from this population, you know, whoops, took exactly three classes? Well, in that case, we're just gonna read the answer right off of the table, and we can see that it was 0.31, but we want to answer as a percentage, so 31% took exactly three classes. What about less than four classes? That means the probability they took one or two or three, but that's it. Don't count four because it says less than four. These are the outcomes that are less than four, so we add up their probabilities. Remember, or means to add and we end up with a 49% chance of grabbing somebody who took four or fewer, sorry, fewer than four classes. Question C, what's the probability of randomly selecting someone who has more than three classes? So they would have to have four or five classes. Adding for or gives us 51% probability of getting somebody who fits that criteria. And what about this last one? two or fewer classes. This one we do count the two because it's two or something smaller. So we're looking at both of those outcomes to get an 18% probability. So now that we're familiar with a discrete probability distribution and how it works, we actually need to create one. So on this first problem, we're given the directions to make a distribution for the number of tails when tossing a coin twice. So we're just looking for tails and there's two tosses of the coin. So first thing I need to do is list all the outcomes. And remember, if you don't remember what the, uh, remember, if you don't remember, <laughs> if you don't remember what the outcomes are, you could, you know, make a tree. For the first toss, we're gonna get heads or tails. From there, the second toss is gonna give us heads or tails. So now I can list all my outcomes, you know, going down all the branches of the tree, and I'm going to get heads twice, heads, tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails. And now I can look at this a little bit closer. Remember, we're looking for the number of tails. So tails showed up zero times, right? If I got heads on both tosses, one of my four outcomes. The number of tails that showed up once was two of my four outcomes, but we should reduce that fraction to a half. And then getting tails twice with both of my tosses is um, one of the four times. So now I'm ready to make my distribution table. So I let X be the number of tails, and I draw a table where I've got all my outcomes listed, and they're all going to be assigned probabilities. Zero tails happen one of four times, one tail half, and two tails fourth. And that's the most. I can't have more than two tails. Why not? Oh yeah, because I'm only tossing the coin twice. And can you have no tails? Yeah, we saw it happen. Okay, so the next problem says create a probability distribution for rolling a die. Well wait, that's kind of vague. It doesn't say the number of threes or the number of odds. It just says rolling a die. Oh, wait, before that, though, don't forget my last distribution table. I double-checked it, added up to one. But okay, so for this, I'm going to go ahead and define x is just the outcome, the value, whatever face value I get. So I'm going to have a table. This time I chose to put my table on its side. There's no set rule. So I need to list all the outcomes and their probability. Well, if I'm listing everything that can happen, I'm going to get a 1 a sixth of the time, a 2 a sixth of the time, etc., up to a 6 a sixth of the time. Now notice it didn't start with 0 because there is no side that's 0, but again, this one does total 1.